Hey there and welcome to a new video. In today's video, we will solve a tricky complex interview question. So let us first go through the question. So the question is to find customers with consecutive purchases. So that is the glimpse of the question. So here is the detailed question. Write a query to identify customers who have made consecutive purchases on back to back days and where each purchase amount was above a specific threshold. Here we are taking the threshold as $100. Now the goal is to find customers who have a pattern of frequent and significant purchase. So this is the goal of the question to find customers who have a pattern of frequent and significant purchases. Now the result should contain customer ID, purchase start date, purchase end date and total amount spent by that particular customer from the particular start date to end date. So that is the question. So for that we are going to create a table called the purchases info table. First let us create the table and then we will insert data into the particular table. So here I have created the purchases info table with purchase ID which is the primary key. Then we have customer ID, purchase date and we have amount. These are the four columns which are available in the purchases info table. Now we will insert data into the purchases info table. Execute and we have 13 rows affected which means 13 rows of data has been inserted into purchases info table. Now let us see the basic structure of data within the table and we will see the expected output and compare the input and output and see what all transformation that we are going to write in order to get the required output. I have created the same table along with the expected output in excel let us take a look at that. So here is the same table which we created now which is the purchases info table and this is the expected output. Like in the question, our final output should contain customer ID, purchase start date, purchase end date and total purchase. And the purchase start date and purchase end date is such that there should be consecutive purchases between the start date and end date. That means there should be continuous purchases happening within start date and end date. So that is the basic condition. Now when we go through the input table, we can see that for customer ID 101, he is making a purchase on 01 11 2024 and again he is making a second purchase on 02 11 2024. So this is a consecutive purchase happening for customer ID 101. Then coming to the third record we can see that again the same customer is making a purchase on 5 11 2024 and same thing is happening on 6th. So there is also a consecutive purchase happening for the same customer on 5 and 6. But there is one more condition given in the question that is the purchase amount should be greater than $100. So when we go through row 3, we can see that here the customer has spent only $90. So this second case, we won't be considering as a consecutive purchase or a back to back purchase where the condition is satisfied. So here in the output table, we can see that we have customer ID 101. He made a purchase on 01 11 2024 and he again made a purchase on 02 11 2024 and the total amount spent by that particular customer is $350 meaning we are taking a sum of $150 plus $200 which will give us $350. Similarly for customer ID 102 again when we go through the table we can see that he is making a purchase on 1 then again he is making a purchase on 2nd and again he is making a purchase on 3rd. So 3 consecutive days that customer has made a purchase. So in the output we can see that purchase start date is on 01 11 2024 until 03 11 2024 he is making a purchase every day and the amount is surpassing $100 meaning the condition is satisfied. So that is how we have customer ID 102 in the output and the total amount spent by that particular customer which is 102 is $380 which is the sum of 110, 130 and 140 which will give us $380. So similarly we have to write a query which is scalable and which will give us output for most of the cases which can appear in the input table. So this is the expected output and this is what we are going to achieve in this question. Now let us go back to SSMS and see how we can write query to get the expected output. So first we will command the DDL and email command. Otherwise when we execute the query it will again insert data into the table. Now we will write a select star on the purchases info table and see what are the columns available 
we already know the columns which are available but we will write a star and then we will write the columns explicitly the table name is purchases underscore info and we will write select star now execute this and we have the same table which we saw in excel now we will specify the column names the first column that we require is customer id customer underscore id now we require purchases date purchase underscore date and the third column that we require is amount these are the only three column that we require to get the expected output now we will make use of the lead window function in order to do some transformation for the purchases date and amount column so first we will write the lead function for purchase date that is lead open and close parenthesis the first argument will be purchase underscore date and offset will be one and whenever there are no lead values it will be substituted with null and now we will write the over close over open and close parenthesis and now partition by will be based on customer id customer underscore id and now order by close will be based on purchases date which will be in ascending order purchase underscore date and order will be ascending and this column will be named as lead purchase date purchase underscore date now we will write lead function on amount column lead of we will copy the same thing but only change which we require here is to change the expression within the lead function meaning instead of purchase date here we will write amount amount and the column name will be as lead underscore amount so this will be the second column now before writing further part of the query we will execute the query and see what is the result we are getting execute this and we will have two new column which is the lead purchase date and lead amount now we will have to find the difference between purchase date and lead purchase date for that we will make use of another function which is the date diff function date diff open and close parenthesis and the difference should be in days so the first argument will be day and now we have to provide the start date and end date so the start date will be purchase date and end date will be lead purchase date so the first argument will be purchase underscore date and second argument will be lead purchase date but here we have to copy the entire function so copy this starting from lead till the end of over close copy this paste it here and now we will give this column name as date flag so this is the column name which we gave to date diff column so here we are calculating the difference between purchase date and lead purchase date in days now execute this and we will have another new column execute and we will have a new column which is the date flag column now in the question there is one more condition that is given that is the amount should be greater than hundred dollars so we will have to write a where clause here that is where amount should be greater than hundred now execute once again and we will be able to reduce the number of records in the query so here now we only have records where the amount is greater than 100 now we will have to place this query within a CTE with result info as so the CTE name is result info now we will write another query on the CTE result info select from result underscore info now here we have to do some transformation such that for a customer id we have to find the least purchase date meaning the minimum purchase date and for the same customer we have to find the maximum purchase date but some conditions should be satisfied so the first condition that we have to write here is write a where clause where date underscore flag should be equal to one so that is the first condition meaning the days purchase date and lead purchase date should be consecutive days that is the difference between purchase date and lead purchase date should be one so whenever that condition is satisfied we can say that some purchase has happened on consecutive days now we will have to write the first column which is required that is customer id 
customer underscore id and the second column which we require is the minimum purchase date but here we have to make use of the minimum aggregate function as an analytic function so here minimum of open and close parenthesis first argument will be purchase date and now we have to write an over close over open and close parenthesis now we will have to write the partition within the over close that is partition by customer underscore id so this is the only argument that we have to provide here within the over close for minimum analytic function so this will be the purchase start date purchase underscore start underscore date now similar way we have to write another function which will give us maximum purchase date so maximum of open and close parenthesis the argument will be lead purchase date so the argument will be lead purchase date so this column will be within the maximum analytic function lead of purchase date now we will have to write the same over close over open and close parenthesis partition by customer underscore id and this will give us the purchase end date purchase underscore end underscore date now again we have to write another function which will give us the amount that is the first amount with respect to each partition for customer id so here we are going to make use of the first value window function first underscore value open and close parenthesis and now we have to write the over close over open and close parenthesis and the argument will be partition by customer id customer underscore id and order by will be based on purchase date purchase underscore date and which will be in ascending order now within the first value window function we have to write the amount as expression so which will give us the first amount with respect to partition customer id and ordering will be based on purchase date and the column name will be amount only we are giving the same column name now we will have to write another function which will basically take the sum of lead amount for every customer id partition within the result table so for that we will write sum of open and close parenthesis and the argument will be lead of amount now over close will be based on partition by customer underscore id close parenthesis and here we will give the same column name which is lead of amount now we completed writing transformation for all the columns that we require in the final output now execute and see what is the result we are getting now we have a result where we have customer id 101 we have purchase start date purchase end date amount and lead amount now again we can see that coming down customer id is repeating two times for customer id 102 and the attributes with respect to customer id is also repeating so we have same purchase date here also we have same purchase start date here also we have same purchase end date same purchase end date and amount are also repeating and for customer id 104 we can see that we have purchase start date purchase end date and amount plus lead amount this transformation also we will keep inside another cte which will be named as base data now we are going to write further transformation on this query so before writing transformation on the base data we will write a distinct so that we only get unique customer id and all other attributes with respect to that customer id without any duplicates now when we do a select star from the base data table we will get the same result without any duplicates now we will do some more transformation here on the base data result so the first column which we require is customer id second column which we require is the purchase start date and third column which we require is purchase end date and now on the fourth column we are doing some transformation using amount and lead amount so here we will take the sum of amount and lead amount column open and close parenthesis amount plus lead underscore amount which will give us the total amount spent by a particular customer starting from that purchase date to the end purchase date and the column name will be total amount spent total underscore amount underscore 
spent now execute and we should be getting the intended result so we have customer id purchase start date purchase end date and total amount spent by that particular customer from the start date to end date on consecutive days now let us copy the result and see if we have the same result as expected now when we compare the result we can see that we have the same output obtained the question was to find customers with consecutive purchase and moreover the goal is to find customers who have a pattern of frequent and significant purchase now we can tell that customer id 101 102 and 104 have a pattern of frequent and significant purchases so this is how we can obtain the result and we can use the result to interpret and make meaningful insights the ddl and dml to create the table will be provided in the description you can use that and create the table hope you like this video thanks for watching and subscribe for more thank you